All right, it's time for another established identity problem, but this time we're going to do it with our double angle formulas. Now, if we take a look at the strategies we talked about in previous problems when we establish identity, one of the first strategies would be change everything into sines and cosines. So I'm going to start with the left hand side. I definitely don't want to start with the right hand side because there's three different identities for cosine two theta, so I wouldn't know which one to put in. So I'm going to change all these into sines and cosines. Okay, so the, the uh, identity for, cosine, for cotangent would be cosine over sine. So I'm going to do cosine theta over sine theta. And then for tangent, tangent identity would be sine theta over cosine theta. I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom. I'm going to use the same identity for that. Cosine over sine and then sine over cosine. So everything so far, uh, I'm just putting in identities for, for both of those. I've changed everything all into sines and cosines. Now the next step that you want to do is you want to get a common denominator because now I have two separate fractions. And in the notes, I got a common denominator for the top and a common denominator for the bottom. I have one fraction on top, one on the bottom. I flipped that and then when I flipped it, uh, I got the final answer. I got things to cancel out. So instead of doing it that way, I want to show you another way that you can do, accomplish the same thing. This is going to be involving multiplying the top and bottom by a power of one. Now what I noticed here is the top and the bottom, both of those have the same common denominator. So whenever you have the same common denominator, you can do uh, this technique I'm going to show now where you multiply by a power of one. So instead of getting each working with top and bottom fractions separately, I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by the common denominator. So here's what it'll look like. I have, I'm going to multiply the top by sine theta cosine theta over one. I'm going to multiply the bottom one by sine theta cosine theta over one. So the whole entire top part I'll write out here. The whole entire bottom part I'll write out also. Okay, and then this is my original fraction here. And I, what I'm doing, again, I'm multiplying this by a power of one. This over this, that would just cancel out and leave one, so I'm really not changing the problem by multiplying by that. And I can only do this, again, when the common denominator on top is the same as the common denominator on the bottom. Okay, now let's go ahead and multiply this through. When I multiply this through, I'm taking this one times the first thing inside the brackets there. When I multiply these two together, what will happen is the signs, those are going to cancel out, but I still have cosine times cosine. That's going to be cosine squared. Next, if I get rid of this one, I'm going to multiply this one by the one over here. When I do that, I have sine times sine, that's sine squared, but cosine over cosine, that's going to cancel. So then what I get here is I get a minus sine squared theta. Now when I, when I do the same thing on the bottom, everything exactly is the same except now I've got a plus sign in between. When I multiply these two, again I get cosine squared, sines cancel out, I get cosine squared theta with a plus. And then when I multiply these, sine times sine, sine squared, cosine and cosine cancel, so now I get sine squared on the end uh, right there. This was the same result I got in the notes by doing it the other way, you, you'll still arrive at the same spot here. Now once you get down to this point, if we start thinking about different techniques to, that we talked about before, everything's all in terms of sines and cosines, we have no more fractions. So at this point, if you, get to, if you reach a roadblock and you're not sure what to do, that's just, this is when you want to start looking for identities that you can put in. For this part, there is an identity for cosine squared minus sine squared. You should recognize that that is the identity for cosine two theta. So I end up with cosine 2 theta on top on the bottom, cosine squared minus or plus sine squared. That's another identity that we talked about in the original session when we talked about how to establish the identity. We had that list of identities up here on the board and one of them was this one here. Cosine squared plus sine squared, that's 1. So now that I've done that, cosine 2 theta over 1 is itself, so therefore I get both sides to be equal to each other. So the idea here again, you're working with one side, working all the way down until you get the left hand side to equal 
the right hand side and your answer is actually your process showing how you get from one step down to the other. So you want to make sure you show these steps here showing how you can work one side all the way down to where one side equals the other side.